Hey everybody, John Fenn here with Church Without Walls International.org or CWOWI.org. Today talking about how it's much more fun to operate in your gifts or to flow in your gifts, but dot dot dot. And here's what I'm talking about. You know, when I was first a Christian, nobody told me that I was signing up for a lifetime of growth and change. <laughs> you know, as a human being, <laughs> yes, I wanted to grow as a Christian, but I didn't know that growth as a Christian meant growing in character and and changing as a human being. You know, nobody told me that. All I wanted when I when I believed on the Lord, I wanted a Lord, I wanted a Father, I wanted to know my Heavenly Father. Nobody told me I was signing up for a lifetime of change. And maybe you felt like that too. But I want to talk, compare gifts and character. You know, out in the world, nobody cares about your character. Our headlines or the social pages or social media or whatever are filled with people who are tremendously gifted. I mean, you've got athletes, you've got artists, you've got actors and actresses, you've got, you've got talented people in all walks of life, financial industry and everything else. But then you read the headlines and you find that they're in you know, failed relationships, they're coming out of rehab or entering into and out of rehab like a revolving door. You know, and you look at their lives and you think, how could somebody so successful in one area be such a total failure in other areas? And the answer is this. If you want to take, compare two things, one is gifts, one is character. You see, the world doesn't care anything about character, but the truth of the matter is God does. And character is what supports the gifts. Now, it's a lot more fun to operate in your giftings. You know, actors, actresses, artists. Maybe people who are, are fantastic with working with their hands. You know, in, in Exodus chapter 31, I believe it is, the Lord talks about people starting with 31 when they're building the tabernacle. He talks about people in, and he says, I have put my wisdom in them. And he talks about gold and, and metal work. He talks about woodwork. He talks about tapestries. Men and women who are skilled in sewing and weaving and tapestries and woodwork and, and metal work and all the things that were required for the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, those giftings, God says, I have put my wisdom in them to know how to do these things. You see, there are many gifts and talents that people have. We, we think, like I said, my examples of actors and actresses, but the fact of the matter is many people have amazing talents, cooking, baking, uh, working with their hands, what, you know, building furniture, building uh, repair work, uh, repairing cars, figuring out how things work. These are all gifts and talents that in the Old Testament in Exodus 31 through, God says, I'm putting my wisdom in people to know how to do this. See, gifts are, go far beyond the charismatic gifts or even the things that move us. Uh, the, what are commonly called the motivational gifts. Some people know how to organize things. Some people know how to just serve. They see a need that needs to be done and boom, they've got a gift for it. Some people are gifted in giving. They wanna give, they wanna give quietly. You know, they just, just enjoy meeting the needs in that way. Some people are gifted with mercy. Some people are gifted with, with telling their story and their testimony and, and encouraging people. Some are teachers, teachers, etc. We all have different gifts and talents and then we go through life, we, we learn about that. We are like hopefully a flower and not an onion as we learn the different layers of our lives and the things that we like to do and the things that we we like to have more time to do. It's always more fun to get to, to flow in the gifts. But when you're in Christ, when you're in Christ, so I'm not talking about just charismatic gifts like prophecy and everything. I'm talking about woodworking and working with your hands and sewing and needlework and and all the different things that that are, you are, that are unique to you, and, but they fulfill you. They help they help fulfill you to say, "Wow, I'm uniquely gifted. I've got this interest. I've got this talent in this." But in Christ, <laughs> it's all about character. In Second Peter one. Uh, verses five through eight, Peter says, giving all diligence, add to your faith. And the very first thing he says is moral excellence, virtue in the King James Version, but it means moral excellence. And to, the, and to that you add self, or excuse me, and then, and then to that you add knowledge, and then to that self-control, and then consistency, and then godliness, and then brotherly love, and then agape love. He says, if these things are in you and abounding, you will not be unbarren nor unfruitful in your life in Christ. And you see, here's the thing, in the world, if the, if the character is down here and the gifts are right here, the world doesn't care. The devil doesn't care anything about your character. So he will exalt the gifts and the gifts will get way out ahead of where the character is. And then that person who's concentrating just on giftings will collapse because there's no, there's no supporting structure of the, 
of the, of the character underneath it. But here's what happens in the Lord. Though the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance, here's what happens with the Lord. The Lord will suspend the gift for a time so that he can work on character. And so character will grow along here, moral excellence and godliness and patience and consistency and things of that nature. So the character will go out here and you're thinking, oh Lord, I wanna go in the gifts again. I want life to be fun again. And then boom, he'll reactivate that. And now the gifts can be supported by the character. There won't be a collapse. If you're out there in the world or if you've been an unbalanced Christian and everything, you've concentrated on your gifts, you've gone clear out here, but you haven't worked on your character, that's why there's a collapse. That that's why it's like, what's happening with my life? I'm such a talented person. What's happening with my life? And boom, there's no character to support the giftings. You see, in Christ, it's going to be a stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start type of growth if you don't address the character at every step of the way. So that is our job as Christians. You, you know, it would be, it would be wonderful uh, to, to operate in the gifts and, and, and have the character grow at the same time, and that's the goal. Let me, let me give you an example, and I'll say this. It's always more fun to operate in the gifts. Uh, talking to a salesman. Now, this is a person who naturally loves to talk to people, gets out there on the lot, in the storefront, whatever the case is, loves to talk to people, loves that part of their job. But you know, the character part of it is he's got to sit down and do paperwork. He hates the paperwork. He loves the selling. He hates the paperwork. The selling is the flowing in the gift. The paperwork is putting the commitment, putting the character to practice. Now, it's more fun to operate in that gift. He loves to sell people, but he hates doing the paperwork. What I've found is that the most successful people are the ones who have trained themselves to do the character issues. They have trained themselves to do the things that don't come naturally to them. That is, the successful salesman will be the one who can not only sell that person on the, on the store floor or the parking lot you know, for the car or whatever the case is, but they're the ones who also do well. They've disciplined themselves to do well in the paperwork and the things which the administration behind them requires. That presents the whole picture, the whole person. They grow both in gift and character. What's, on, what's another thing? Uh, another thing would be a person who is so off on their gifting. Maybe they love serving and they serve to the point that they ignore their family and they would rather go serve. And this is, I think, the trouble with a lot of preacher's kids. Uh, they would rather pick up the phone and interrupt the family meal at 6 p.m. when they're sitting down having dinner to go operate in the gift to be that pastor, to be that advisor, counselor for a person, instead of doing what to them is the more difficult thing to sit there and ignore their parishioner while they sit there and have a family meal, just a normal mundane every night family meal. But you see, it's the, it's the whole package. It's the gifts and the character that, that are required. And so whatever your gifting is, you'll enjoy that. And whatever your job is, you will enjoy that. Or, but there will be a part of every job and every day that you don't want to do because that involves character. That involves consistency. That involves patience. That involves exercising the fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness, kindness. Uh, that's not so much fun to do. We'd rather be out there if we're a salesperson, go out there on the salesman's floor. Or if we work with our hands, we'd rather bake you know, till we've run out of flour to go take to people in need rather than address the needs in our family. I know when I was teaching uh, um, at various places, but, but one per particular place where I was an adjunct teacher for a school, and we'd have people and they would come and they'd spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on a weekend to attend classes over the weekend. And they, they'd be in my class. They want me to pray for their family back home, that they would come to the Lord. And in many of them, when I'd see these people over and over at these, these concentrated weekends for instruction, I think, I think if you would take that money that you spend on yourself here, and, and, and well, instead of asking me and others to join in prayer, you need to go back home and be that parent, be that spouse to your family. It's not as fun as coming there and getting soaked in by a lot of good teachers and the anointing and the Spirit of God and worship and everything else. But it's the character issues. That's what's going to save your family. Take that money and go spend some family time. It's like, well, my spouse is unsaved and my kids are a mess. Yeah, but that's the character building. That's what you need to do. It's more fun to operate in the gift, but you need to do the character. 
And so anyway, that's my word for today. That's the thing that was on my heart is to talk about the difference between gifts and character. You don't want to get ahead in gifts so that you have no character to support it. But also know that if you're in a time right now where God's been working on your character, he's been working on your godliness, and your gifts have felt like they're, they're suspended and you think, what's God doing with me? Just know that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Right now, he's just working in other areas. And that time will come when those gifts will come along. And that way you can be neither barren nor or unfruitful, as Peter says, as these things are in you so that you can operate in your gifts and your character and be a whole person and be a far better person in Christ for it. All right, God bless. Talk to you next time.